Yo, what's up, comic book fans? Pete here from Comic Books Transformed, where me and my very good friend Brian over there talk about all the adaptations from comic books into streaming shows and movies. Brian, you are rocking a Grimlock shirt, huh? Yes, sir. We both got our uh, Transformers on today. <laughs> And uh, there's some awesome Transformers comics. Here's a little segue. You ready for this? There are Transformers comics that are made by Skybound, which is owned by Robert Kirkman. Robert Kirkman created Invincible. Today, we're here to talk about Invincible, Season 2, Episode 3. Yes. Brian, is uh, this the horniest episode of Invincible? Yeah, I, I would totally say so, yes. <laughs> Tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um in our conversations you've mentioned that you haven't really read a lot of invincible right like wh where have you gotten up to in the story i think i read about an issue or two right after i finished oh. season one which was oh. what three years ago now and, <laughs> I, and i think i think i trailed off of it because i'm like I, I just watched this and this is almost the exact same thing so i just didn't i didn't do it i think i intended to read it before season two came out and i just forgot because it's been two and a half three years yeah i do have the uh the first compendium so it's like the first like 50 issues or something like that which i don't think I, I don't think we've approached crossing yet so um yeah it's it's very interesting though that you you say that because the show kind of alludes to stuff that's like way further in the series and there's stuff that kind of happens a little earlier like with nolan okay so spoilers for invincible by the way with nolan showing at the end of this episode i think that's within your compendium that you own okay you so, know, but it's you're saying that happens later on. Yes. Than you'd yeah. Okay. <clears throat> like what's really amazing about the show is that somehow they're hitting the overarching beats, like the main beats. But then they're also kind of throwing in these little side stories, too, with all these different characters. And um, I think in the comics, there's just more of the side stuff and more like Invincible just having little adventures. OK. Yeah, it's like a more like a traditional comic book in a sense. It's just kind of weekly one-off issues, and and they're really kind of trying to wrap in like a multi serialized multi multi plot uh, arc here overall. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what's really great about Invincible is that it feels like an older comic. It feels like something from maybe the '60s or '70s, and you know, probably '80s too. I remember reading stuff like it when I was a kid, but of course, they have that like ultra violence in it too yeah that, you know. i mean it kind of almost is an older comic at this point i mean it started in the early it was the mid 2000s or was it later i dude i think it's actually like the early 2000s i mean you can look it up real quick if you want but i'm pretty sure i still lived in staten island i think you and i were like going to the store together and it was out oh 2003 yeah yeah there you go there you go and then it ended in 2018 okay yeah, yeah. Oh, so i mean that kind of disqualifies my statement. I mean, it ended. It only ended about five years ago, so it doesn't make it older. But still, it's like, what else started around then? Like New X Men, Ultimate Spider Man, things like that. So it, it is kind of a little on the older side now. Well, I mean, two thousand three is twenty years ago, right? Yeah, almost yeah. twenty one years ago. Yeah, so we could uh, almost buy Invincible beer now, right? The comic. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I love about the comic and this show too is that they have ridiculous graphic violence like straight out of a horror movie but then when it comes to sexual stuff they're like oh we better cut away from that well yeah i mean isn't that kind of like like a perfect you know analogy for america <laughs> yes yes there you, you know, go yes we have all kinds of violence and things all around us all the time but, right you know even the the, the faintest uh, well i guess it's slipped a little more lately you know we, we do see more on uh on tv and in movies than we had previously maybe but uh, violence is front and center and barely sheltered from anybody these days. Yes, yes, yes. They, they made that exact same joke in the comic where they're like, oh, well, while they're having their private moment, let's cut over to this story. And I just, I loved it then. And that was like <laughs> 15 years ago. And now it's, it's just equally funny here. And it's, it's great because there's so many different voice actors that you recognize, you know, like Seth Rogen is Alan and uh, his, do you know who his girlfriend was this time around? Uh, it was Tatiana Maslany again. He's back again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Tatiana Mis Maslany and Seth Rogen are getting it on in outer space. And then uh, Zay Z Beats and uh, Stephen Yon are getting it on on Earth. And you knew who I want to get her on with. Oh. Oh, boy. Uh, who? <laughs> well, obviously, Optimus Prime is in this episode. <laughs> oh, <that's> <laughs> I 
wow. I, I wasn't expecting to go that lane, but that's awesome. I love that we're wearing Transformers shirts too. Oh, of course I of course we are. Of course I would say that. <laughs> 40 something plus year old man. He's like, I want to get it on with Optimus Prime. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful, man. Peter Cullen. I, okay, so one thing I'll say about Peter Cullen, and boy, we are jumping all over the place, but that character is in the comics. But what he does in this issue, or this, I'm sorry, this episode, I don't think happens in the comics. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, yeah. I, I mean, it, I guess we're going jumping to the end of the episode here, but. Yeah, uh, it, it appears he removes the life support. Yeah, yeah, on Alan. So By yeah, the way, wait, before I, I might as well elaborate on that entire scene, which really threw me for a, a crazy loop because there's this violent scene, and uh, you know, and I, I a, a few seconds before I hear Optimus Prime's voice, and then we cut to a a life monitor just flipping there. Just it brought me back to 1986. Oh man, you had some uh, PTSD there, right? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Yes. Well, it's interesting because that character's in the comics, right? And and hearing him with Peter Cullen's voice is just so fucking sweet. And he, he's not doing the straight up Optimus voice. It's it, There's a variation there. Yeah, I agree. The, the funniest thing is when you listen to Peter Cullen's voice and um, he's kind of doing something besides Optimus. Like, did you ever see that Dungeons and Dragons cartoon? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's the villain, right? I, he's I the villain, he's the villain, yeah. and it's like he's doing a villainous voice, but you can still hear the Optimus in there. But it's like, oh, this is different, you know? Yeah, and, awesome. and he's doing this. It, the character he's playing on this show kind of has like a little bit more bravado to him than Optimus, or like a little bit more uh gruffness to him than Optimus. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, he is uh, Peter Cullen is in his 80s now, so I mean, oh, holy uh, shit. that's just gonna come naturally, I, I would say, as well. Yeah, and isn't he getting like some kind of lifetime achievement award too? Um, I may, maybe possibly, I mean, I, I know he's been honored ridic a ridiculous amount of times for, for the transformer stuff and yeah. in the fandom and community for various things. But, um, yeah, I, I don't think I've heard about that yet. Well, cause he was trending on X or Twitter or whatever the fuck, uh, this week. And, uh, I clicked on it cause I was like, Jesus Christ, don't let him be dead. But then it was because he was getting this lifetime achievement award. Oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, anyway, we're jumping all over the place. Um, mm -hmm. I don't remember if in the comics he takes Alan off of life support, but watching it on the show makes it seem like there's a, a, definitely like a sinister, like he's the mole that they're referring to. Um, in the comics, it's something different altogether. And I, I'm not sure if that happens in the comics and then there's an explanation for it or if they're going a different route with the show. Yeah, on, on one level, it, it seems odd because he's the one that tells him like right. there's a mole. You know, right. right. Um, I, I don't know. The only thing I could think of is he was trying to gain his trust to, to see if he knew something that that he wasn't saying and it was yeah. just telling him just him. But um, I, it, it did. It, it was a left turn for me because it definitely and it definitely appeared like he took him off life support with a sinister intent. Um, I mean, maybe you could argue that it was for like a mercy kind of thing because he got Alan got really roughed up real bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. Okay, well, I want to I want to address what you just said. First off, I don't remember if Alan's girlfriend shows up as early as she does in the show. Like, I think in the comic, she shows up a lot later, but I might be wrong. It's been a long time since I read those early issues. But um, there is one point where he just gets his fucking ass handed to him by Voltramites, and it's, like, really brutal like that. It, it's kind of cool talking to somebody who this is your first time seeing that. Like, what was that like for you? Uh, it, it was very shocking because they used this. They're sitting having this weird ass, uh, you know, lunch in an alien diner, and the bowl is eating the other food. And <laughs> it was just a great, weird little se se uh, segment. And then it's like, oh, and then you start saying, like, oh, I, you know, I'm not supposed to say this, but there's a, and then you just see this crash, and you know, the Viltrumites are just the three of them are just attacking him, just beating the shit out of him. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, what's cool is that. It, it, well, okay, it's not cool, but like they knock him out of that restaurant and they're talking to him at first. And I, I love the fact that there's no sound in space. It's just their like telepathy. Yeah. They're talking to each other. Yeah. And then and then they just sort of like very emotionlessly like just, and swiftly just kind of knock him back and forth to each other like a fucking ping pong ball. Yeah. And and ultimately the, the, what they're trying to do is they're trying to find out where um, where Nolan is, where, where Omni Man is. Right, right, right. So it's like they're on to something. Uh, the Viltrumites are always so scary in the comics, and I think they really showed that in the show, too. Yeah, I think – I keep thinking, like, I, I really like that they all just look human. 
Yeah. And they're yeah. that terrifying. You know, I, I think it's a nice change of pace, I guess. Because yeah. generally when you have these like superpower things, they're always kind of monstrous looking or very alien looking or something like that. I mean, I guess you could argue that, you know, that they're sort of like Superman plus Saiyans in a way. Yeah. Um, and and they, they looked human as well. But um, I, I just like that. Um, I, I like how, the, how they do that in this series. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're definitely like Kryptonians gone bad, you know? Yeah. Like super fucking scary. I mean, even in DC when the Kryptonians came back and like, they were on earth that was really scary too you know yeah yeah because uh, what they could do so uh, they cut to alan and his girlfriend uh this whole plot that you and i kind of keep just bouncing around because essentially mark and his girlfriend go to have sex in college and it's like well we can't show them having sex which is so funny because then they cut to them in outer space and they start having sex too yeah and I think the, the announcer goes like, oh, tentacles, right? Did you kind of yeah. reference that? Right? Yeah, yeah. So funny. So funny. Um, but then it, it's interesting, too, because, like, with this episode, it's it's essentially, like, two stories in one. One is the Alan story, and then one is the Mark story. But then the Alan one, they even do the little opening logo thing like they do with Invincible. That was cool. I, and that threw me for a little bit of a loop, too, because it was – uh, it was a little bit later in the episode, and then it ended too. So, and then I'm like, "Wait a minute, is this is this holding over?" It, it was a little strange, but um, yeah, because did, did they start showing credits after he pulled the life support? They did. Yeah, it? they showed credits. Yeah, uh, for uh, for the the Alan portion of this episode. <laughs> That's so funny, man. This show is so like you know original <laughs> and fun. Um, so then with the invincible stuff on Earth, he goes to college and. There's so many good fucking comedy beats. Like, I think one of the funniest fucking things was when he's with his roommate, who's a gay man, and the roommate's like, okay, when you put the sock on the door, that means don't come in. And, like, Mark literally goes out the door, and then the sock's on the door. Like, immediately. <laughs> I fucking love that. I also love that later on they revealed that it's like, oh, I just forgot about it there. I just uh, left I mean the sock there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so funny. And then... um you know, is like him adjusting to college life and, and, oh, how did you feel when he dumped his action figures in the trash? Oh, man, that hurt. But I get it. Um, you, you, everybody kind of goes through that growing up phase. Yeah. And then, you know, as you get older, you stop caring and you go back into your child phase, which is, I, which is what I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah. But seriously, like when you go to college, you, you kind of, you, you, you're almost an adult. You, you want to be treated like one and seen differently and, and all that. So it, it uh it, it makes sense to do something like that to stop appearing appearing like a child but it's almost funny because he uh on one hand he is a superhero and he's doing all these crazy things but he still is collecting these action figures and, and it's almost like he hasn't grown it uh some part of me has hasn't emotionally grown past his childhood right 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 yeah i mean he, he's so very innocent right because like when he goes to like have sex with his girlfriend he almost seems like he's kind of scared too like oh we're gonna do this yeah well i mean yeah. uh, you know i it's funny because you can look at it as if either he's unsure of how to do it or how to advance or if he's ready for it or whatever. But at the same time, and and Amber even asked these questions, I'm like, are you sure this isn't going to kill me? Right, that's right. Where, that was, that's where my head would go first, I think. I'm like, oh, God, is what's going to happen here? But yes. it sounds like he, he clearly hasn't even done that very much, anything like that very much and, and figured any, any of those aspects out. Yeah, yeah. I, I took it as like he's a virgin and he's about to lose oh, virginity. Definitely a virgin, but I, I mean, I, I'm I'm going on a limb here and saying he hasn't done, uh, you know, even like masturbated or anything like that. There you go. Like there you go. College, so, yeah. Like, how do we say this on YouTube? So it's on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fun because she. I think she says the word sperm at one point too, and I'm like, wow, that's so funny to see that being said on a cartoon animated series you know yeah but it's it's a it's a thing you always like you always kind of question in the back of your head with like superman and lois lane like how does that work <laughs> right 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 well kevin smith has that whole bit that he does about the kryptonite right. condom that's right you know? yeah, yeah yeah wow we talked a lot about <laughs> sex this time around especially well, they with did, uh, we have <laughs> so um one serious part of the episode was when uh mark's mom what's mark's mom's name again um i want to say debbie De yes debbie you're right you're right debbie goes to that like grief counseling session but it's essentially for the spouses of superheroes and that's in the yeah. comic too what would you think of that um that 
I, I mean, I, I, I knew, I, I immediately saw where it was going the second they showed the, um, uh, I, I kind of the, like the meeting, the group meeting room. Yeah. Um, you could tell that it's people that were lost. And the second that one guy stands up and they had to kind of make eye contact that they tell there's going to be a little connection there. Yep. And you knew it was going to come crashing down the second they, they found out, figured out that, uh, you know, her, the person she's talking about is, is the one who killed all these people. <laughs> yeah. and, and it's still technically alive yeah really so it, it really puts a unique uh kind of view and or twist on her grief mm-hmm. because you know it's she was married to a monster essentially mm-hmm. um and and all these people are grieving in a similar way but not exactly so she really has no one to relate to mm-hmm. at all and and that's that's like really, really that was like the darkest one of the darkest things I've seen in this show. Period. Yes, yes. And I I ate it all up too, man. That that whole aspect of when you are with people that are grieving because their loved ones have been murdered, but then you are somehow connected to the person that murdered them. I've seen that before, and it's always super powerful and dark. Uh, There's a really great example of that, which is um, this movie, We Need to Talk About Kevin, which I bring that up because that stars Ezra Miller. They they are Kevin in that movie. And that's about like a school uh, shooting scenario. He uses a bow and arrow, but he kills a bunch of students. And then like, um, oh my God, what the fuck is her name from Doctor Strange? Tilda Swinton. Tilda Swinton, um, she's his mom. And so she has to deal with everyone's anger about him, you know? And it's very similar to this Omni-Man thing with the the superheroes. It's like this idea of like, you didn't know that your loved one had the capacity to do something so horrible. And I think that that's like really interesting subject matter to show, but it's like super dark and upsetting. Of course, yeah. And and, and fucking um, Sandra Oh just does a fantastic job like delivering that speech too. Absolutely killing it this season <laughs> yeah and then i don't know if you recognize the voice but that was david diggs who was like the guy that she was talking yes. to yeah every every voice is someone i know from something else like even that like the narrator was was paul f tompkins right. um, uh there was somebody else that uh, there was some other voice that i recognized too that was like a like a well-known voice actress but not maybe like a acting celebrity um but i can't remember what character it was it'll come to um, you later there was one thing that, you know, it's funny, Brian, we do so many of these shows and I always think about things afterwards. I'm like, oh, fuck, Brian and I should have talked about this. But like um, the voice actor for Megatron in the Transformers games, he was like the Serpent King in the last episode, right? Really? I, th- I think so. I think I remember like someone had a picture of that Megatron from like all the um, like Fall of Cybertron games and stuff. And they had the Serpent Oh, uh, Fred, 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 Fred Tadasiori, maybe? I think I so, I think so. Up. And he was like, oh, I could tell right away hearing this voice that it's him, you know? And so um, I, I love when they have, like, people that are, like, from Transformers or, like, you know, you'll always have, like, fucking Frank Welker on this kind of stuff, and he's just in everything, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's prolific, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or, like, uh, what's-her-face that was, like, She's Twilight Sparkle, but then she's Yeah, you're right. It is. Fred Tad. I don't know how to pronounce this. It's T-A-T-A-S-C-I-O-R-E. I want to say Tadasiri, but I, I could be completely butchering that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But, but so someone recognized that. And then, like, uh, you know, Tara Strong, she's in a lot of these things, too. But, yeah, yeah. just the voice cast is just so fantastic on this show. Um, I guess we should probably just bring up the big reveal at the end uh do you want to talk about that real quick yeah uh another thing too um i i believe this is something i i believe i remember uh or or i saw somewhere um the his like comic post the one comic figure he doesn't throw away which was seance dog yes yes. that that's another kirkman character in the comic though is is it is it science dog Okay, so I've wondered about that too. It is Science Dog in the comics, and it's a whole science thing. He's almost like kind of Tom Strong. You remember Tom Strong? Yeah, yeah. He's like that, but a dog, right? And I think I think the reason why they use Seance Dog is because um, they actually had like a cartoon or something of Science Dog. Oh, okay. I was very so curious because I thought I thought he was involved in the creation of that. At least I, I figured maybe it was some kind of creator dispute or something. But. Yeah, um, I, I think it's because they actually had like a science dog cartoon and like it was for little kids and so they didn't want it to be like crossing over with this, you know? 
Got it, got it. That well, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, because in the comics, in the Invincible comics, he's just a character too. And then I think he does show up as an alien, like he does in this episode as well. Okay. But um, yeah, I, <laughs> he was he's like Doctor Strange, and it was it was real funny when Mark just kept like beating him up, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then so Mark beats him up because um because you realize he's he's not actually that and he what, what he really is is comes some kind of like shape-shifting alien kind of looks like a praying mantis of some kind and he uh comes to him with this problem that he's saying that, that his planet is being threatened and they've heard tales of invincible across the galaxy which i mean should be suspect already you know right um right. Th there's no way that, that that him getting beat up by his dad is uh you know information that's, that's got around the entire galaxy in a right. positive manner you know Right. Um, or maybe they just heard about a Viltrumite that that's that's not an asshole. Maybe I don't know. But right. Mark buys it. Look, line sinker gets in the ship. He's going to go away for a couple months, uh, weeks, or months, whatever he says. Uh, Amber's not really happy about it. Uh, Cecil is definitely not happy about it. Right. And uh, he gets there. He starts asking questions, and, he, and the the guy kind of drops the ball and forgets. He's like, oh, oh yeah, I forgot about that gag. <laughs> and then we eventually find out that uh, he's he bringing him to the leader, the monarch, which is his dad. Right. Um, Nolan's there. Omni-Man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you weren't expecting that at all, right? I, I wasn't. Uh, no, I was not. Um, okay. And I, and I guess the, the intent there is to is for him, uh, for Omni-Man or Nolan to show Mark what what uh, what the what the village might do for planets and, and like the positive effects of it. Maybe and that's what I'm kind of guessing. Yeah. 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 Um, so I, I don't want to even go into like what Nolan is doing there, okay. uh, but that was kind of a big deal in the comics when the dad showed up again, because it's just like in the show where the dad's like, oh my God, like we haven't seen him for three episodes now and he comes at the very end of this one. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously it's going to be a big deal. Om Omni-Man has become such a big character. He's, I'd, I'd say he's kind of bigger than Invincible at this point in media in general, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Right, because Especially I mean, like his, uh, Mortal Kombat appearance. <laughs> right, right, right. He, like he's in Mortal Kombat. They use him in memes a lot. They don't really use Invincible in memes, but they use Omni Man a lot of the time. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's it's a big deal. I, I'm not going to spoil what happens next, but uh, it's just great to have J.K. Simmons back on the show. H how many episodes are in the season? I always ask this. I'm sorry. Uh, I I don't know. Um, it's probably around seven or eight, and I do know that there is a. Uh, there's a break somewhere in the middle. Um, okay. So I think we're going to get one more. Okay. And and then we're going to take a break. And, oh, yeah, there's eight total. So we're going to get four now and then four next year. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's some important stuff that happens with, like, his dad and stuff on this planet coming up. So I, I think I know where they'll probably take the break. Uh, yeah. So there's a lot of ex exciting stuff coming up on Invincible. Do you have anything else you want to say about this episode? Uh, no, I guess that's it. Nice, nice. Okay, so then uh, Brian and I are going to wrap up this talk on Invincible. Make sure you guys are with us for next week when we talk about the, the season four, three. Uh, Jesus Christ. The season two, episode four episode. And uh, now Brian and I are actually going to record our review of the Marvels. So I've been looking forward to this. Make sure you guys check that out too. And that you subscribe to Comic Books Transformed. And we'll see you guys next time.